Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you today. Thank you for the ability to receive instructions from you and to receive your truth. Thank you for your spirit that you have given us, bringing us perfect understanding of your truth and the knowledge of you. Oh, we are so glad today. And I declare today, burdens shall be removed and yokes shall be destroyed. It is the anointing of your spirit that causes these things to be so. So I receive utterance from you even now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'm sharing with you this week on how to end the year. Now I know we're looking towards Christmas, but we're also looking at the end of the year. So get ready. Praise God. Get, get ready. As, as I share this truth with us, you are, I'm trying to bring you to understand what God is saying to, the, to you as we close up the year. Now there are lots of things happening around us. But that's why I'm sharing these things with you. So you stay on track with the Lord. Step by step, and you're going to end this year victoriously. And all the evil that is going on around the world will not touch you. You know why? Because you are the blessing of God. Now we're looking at how the blessing of God came to every family. God's intention is to bless every family on the earth. He said, what do you mean every family on the earth? Not every Jewish family on the earth. No, every family on the earth. That's your village. That's your village that you have to go by sea three hours before you get to your village. Listen, God is concerned about every family that is there. He's concerned about every family in India, in China, in Iraq, in, in Iran, in, I mean, wherever you can think of. The end of the year, in Australia, he, he, in New Zealand, he, he's thinking of every family there. And what's his thought? How to bring the blessing. God is not wicked as people have painted him to be. He's not. He is thinking every moment how to, how to bless one more person. Praise God. And now he, he has set the pattern that it is because of you the blessing of God will come to that family. You know, sometimes you want to just think about it. Okay, who, how many families have I been responsible for bringing the blessing to them? How many families can I confidently say, I led someone to Christ there? And or because of me, someone is standing in, his, in the truth of Christ in that family. Is it because it's not just enough for someone to be born again or someone to be going to church in that family? No, 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 it's not enough. It is taking, and that's why I'm sharing these things with you, so you will learn how to take your responsibility as the seed of Abraham in your family praise god yeah that's why i'm sharing these things with you so i'm taking you to the root of it first of all god's intention is to bless your family is to bless every family on the earth and that's why jesus came and he came to give us life so one of the blessings that abraham one of the blessings that god intends when he spoke to abraham was life because that's why Jesus came. He says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life. Mm. Now notice something. He says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, 29, sorry. And if, ye be, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So heirs according to the promise. Now when you say the word heir, it means there is something to inherit. So what are we inheriting here? Now when he says heirs according to the promise, what does it mean? You are the heir according to the will. The will gave a criteria on who the firstborn is is the will give a criteria who will inherit the, this property and all these things the will gives specification of it now he now says if you are christ then you are abraham's seed then you are heirs according to the promise so according to the promise he says you are the heir 
And now what does that mean? It means you are the inheritor. You are the one who's going to carry out this blessing. Hallelujah. And you bring it to your family members. So what are those blessings? Think about it. Everything good that God gives is a blessing. And listen what, what it says in Proverbs. It says, the blessing of the Lord eats, makes rich, and it adds no sorrow with it. Now, now you see that word, no sorrow with it. You, you, you wonder, mm, let, me, let me read. Re let me read this. Now we're reading um, in Proverbs chapter 10. And verse 22. I, I want to read it another translation. Let's look at the amplified version. It says, The blessing, Proverbs 10 22. It says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich and adds no sorrow with it. Then it says in bracket, Neither does toiling increase it. Toiling doesn't increase it what's it saying sometimes you know we want to interpret it this way that when god blesses you nobody can steal it yes that is true but you see the amplifier brought it closer home by saying when i mean closer home closer to what was in the mind of god so what is it the blessing of god it makes rich apart from toil that's why it says toiling doesn't increase it. So it's telling you that the blessing of God doesn't come by toil. The blessing of God is different from what you toil for. There's a big difference. Oh, I, I, I wish you would come to the place of understanding. There's a difference between what you toil to get and then what God gives to you. What God gives to you is the blessing. And he said the blessing will make you rich. The blessing is not riches. Get it. But the blessing has the ability to make you rich. You see? So, you are blessed now. <laughs> and, and what do you want? I, I want a new car. Okay. The blessing of God is not the car. The blessing of God is in your spirit. But you see, what does the blessing do to you? The blessing causes you to prosper. Now, how do you prosper? So I won't, won't say this. And people just think money. So you begin to prosper when you start having money. Not necessarily. Prosperity primarily is not money. Prosperity, this is the best way I can explain prosperity to you. Prosperity is the flowing of your mind and your intellect. To the possibilities of God. That is prosperity. It's not how much you have in your bank account. But how much your mind can conceive. And ex fully express itself progressively. Working with God. To achieve what you want to achieve. Oh. Let me explain it. So you get it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, he said, John said, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See, he, he, he qualifies your physical prosperity with the prosperity of your soul. Now, what does that mean if as your soul prospers? Your soul is not limited, is not bound by what the earth have, 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 have bound you know, people's soul with. For example, you, you, you tell yourself, hmm, I want a new house, but with the job I have now, it's not possible. Why is it not possible? Because that is what the world has said. You, you are earning this much, so don't even think above this. That's not prosperity. You're not working in the blessing of God. You're working by toiling. So, so what you toil has become a bondage to your mind. So what does God do to, re, re, to when, when God blesses you, what happens? He, he prospers your mind. Now, that's why the blessing of the Lord comes with his word. 
So you are here living in one, one single room. In fact, the roof of that room, you can see that it's leaking. It has turned brown because of leakage. You've not been able to fix it. And, and you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to explain how poverty can be. And you are there. And God speaks to you and says, Son, you will own estates. <laughs> you look at where you are, you look at yourself and say, God, see, just, just leave me as I am. <laughs> see, just, just leave me as I am. God is introducing you to prosperity. But you are fighting it right now. Until you accept it and understand it. Now, when I mean understand, you may not understand the full, the full details of it. But you understand that, come, this God can do it. He said, that's what God did to Abraham. Abraham, I'll give you a son. He couldn't, you would think he was happy. Wow, God says, give us a son. Okay, wow. He, he, until God one day, you know, after the birth of Ishmael, and God said, ah, walk before me and be perfect. And God began to talk to Abraham. And he says, Abraham. Sarah, your wife, will give birth to a son. Abraham thought about it and he said, ha, 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 no, Lord. <laughs> this, was, this were his words. He said, Lord, let Ishmael live before you. Now, that's to tell you that all this while, he never understood what God was talking about. And that's part of the things that caused the delay. God was trying to get his mind to prosper. God was trying to get his mind to see. That's why God was saying, come, come out, come out, come out. Count the stars. And he will count the stars. He said, so why am I counting the stars? Because that's how your seed will be. Ooh, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hundred, one hundred and one, one hundred and two. One, oh, no, no. Ah, it's, it's, it's like this thing is moving. I think I've counted this one. Where do I start from? Wait, no, wait, wait. Hmm. Okay, okay, let me start again. I'm, I'm taking this star as my reference point, and I'm going to go this way. <laughs> and then God says, Lord, I can't. I can't. God says, Fine. That's how you will not be able to count your seed. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, Bobo, where is he going to start from? He could have figured that part out until God spoke and said, Sarah, your wife. And Abraham, the Bible said he fell on the floor and laughed. So all this was, this, this was years gone by. <laughs> you want to wonder, what was he thinking? He said, no. God said, no, Abraham, you see me, I will keep my word. So Abraham, and God kept his word to Abraham. Sarah got pregnant and she gave birth to the son, Isaac, just as God had said. What was God trying to do to Abraham? Prosper his mind. See, that's where it starts from. The prosperity of your mind is where it starts from. Now, what does it mean, the prosperity of the, of the mind? What do you think God can do? What, what, what do you think? What, what do you think is possible with God? You. What do you think is possible with God? Our time is up. Praise God. I'm going to continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.